Welcome again. Right now we're at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 10, Paul's thorn. Paul went on to say, It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast, for I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who was caught up into the third heaven 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I don't know, or whether out of the body, I don't know. God knows. I know such a man, whether in the body or outside of the body, I don't know, God knows, how he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. There is a place in the heavenly realms. There is a place in the Lord where it is just so glorious, so holy. It's not even legal in the sight of God. It's not even lawful. And, you know, it's not even possible to utter. On behalf of such a one, I will boast. But on my own behalf, I will not boast except in my weaknesses. A lot of people believe that Paul was actually talking about himself when he said, I know a man who was caught up into paradise. Well, it seems to me like there is a hint here that he really wasn't talking about himself, although he could have been. And the reason why I say that is because what we just read here. On behalf of one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast. Paul made a distinction here between this man and himself. He said, I will boast on his behalf, but not on my behalf. Okay, so if he was writing about himself, I mean, he's really, I mean, the way he writes is very weird to say the least, if that it was himself that he's talking about. For if I would desire to boast, I will not be foolish, for I will speak the truth. But if I refrain so that no man may think more of me than that which he sees in me or hears from me, Paul didn't want people to think too highly of him. And you know, that's really contrary to what a lot of Christians do today. I mean, a lot of Christians today, not only do they think really, really highly of Paul, but they even take the words of Paul above the words of Jesus. They, they really form their whole entire salvation message on their interpretations of Paul, taking a bite here, taking a bite there, taking a verse here, taking a verse there, putting it together and saying, this is what happens, you know, when it comes to salvation. This is what Judgment Day is going to look like according to what I read in Paul's letters. This is how we are going to be judged. But listen, Jesus made it very clear, Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23, and Matthew chapter 25, exactly how he's going to judge. And it's not the way most Christians say today. So Paul refrains from boasting so that no man may think of him more than he ought to think. By reason of the exceeding greatness of revelations, that I should not be exalted excessively, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Okay, This thorn was a messenger of Satan, an evil spirit that tormented him, that he should not be exalted excessively. We dealt with this in the other video called Satan Quick Study. Now, God uses Satan for many things and for his glory, actually, on many accounts. Satan is in existence only because God not only allows him, but wills him to be in existence. It's not like God says, oh, I don't want Satan to be in existence, but I can't do nothing about it. No, no, no. I mean, there is a plan for Satan. We read about it in the scriptures, and we talked about it in the previous video. Concerning this thing, I begged the Lord three times that it might depart from me. He has said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather glory in my weaknesses that the power of Christ may rest on me. This word is sufficient is from the Greek archeo, and that is really gives an implication here that it's not just, oh, my grace is sufficient. In other words, all you need is my grace. You know, uh, you don't need this thorn gone from you at all. All you need is just my grace. But the Greek word translated is sufficient here, archeo, also brings the meaning of sufficient 
to ward that off of you. In other words, this could be interpreted as saying that Jesus replied saying, my grace is powerful enough to ward that off of you. Therefore, I take pleasure in weaknesses, in injuries, in necessities, in persecutions, and in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Seek God while he may be found, because there is coming a day when he won't be found. Seek him with all your heart, and if you do, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.